Beloved, this is Commanding the Year, 2023 series. It is a yearly solemn feast instructed by God, in which we commit the year into God's hands, and command the year to go in line with God's will for us. Join us now in today's episode. Amen to Jesus. Amen. We're going to be continuing today on um, uh, the blessing of Judah. We're looking at the fourth component of the blessing. And today we're looking at um, lion's wealth from the prey. Genesis 49 verse 9 says, Judah is a lion's wealth from the prey. My son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion who shall rouse him up. Judah is a lion's wealth from the prey. Judas is a lion's will from the prey. Now, Holy Spirit grant us revelation to your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, what does lion's will from the prey mean? You see, this phrase is a very important phrase. When I looked at it and I was like, ah, what does this actually imply? We need to really know the meaning for all things before we jump into the Amen to Jesus. Amen. Now, using a few other translations, just use one other translation, we're able to get a little mm. uh, clarity to what it means and when we have the Hebrew and Greek are we together yes. and we can get a clue to the meaning of the phrase on that study now the Bible in basic English says Judah is a young lion like a lion full of darkness Judah is a young lion like a lion full of meat amen to Jesus amen. now well is from the Hebrew word it's from the Hebrew word um Go. And um, go means a calm, a lion's calm. It means a young, a young lion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So basically, a, a, a whelp is a calm or a young lion. Praise the Lord forevermore. Mm-hmm. Whichever the case may be, a young lion is a calm. A calm is a young lion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's what the whelp is. Amen to Jesus. Mm-hmm. All right. And then um, the prey is from the um, Hebrew word teref. And teref means food, food, food. So basically, when the baby is says um, Judah is a young lion, is correct because he's a young lion, like a lion full of meat. Meat is food, so it's also correct. It's a just simple explanation for um, what the King James. Stated. When I looked at that translation, they were similar to the King James. So they couldn't really just make it as simple as possible. Are we together? Yeah. All right. So the BB makes it as simple as possible. Now, so what does this imply? This means that this blessing that Ju- Ju- Jacob gave to Judah called Judah a young lion or cow who had eaten and stood up due to satisfaction. So he was. This blessing was called. He called Judah. A young lion who had eaten and stood up due to what? Satisfaction. A young lion who had eaten and stood up due to what? Satisfaction. And you know, when lions kill a prey, um, the, 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 the female lions go hunting, are you get what I'm saying? They hunt, they kill, and then it is then the males come and eat, and then they bring the cubs to also come and eat. Now, until they are satisfied, they don't need to pray. Until they are satisfied, they don't need to pray. Actually, when they are satisfied, they don't actually crack the bones. When they are satisfied, then you can see that scavengers start coming for the meat, for the prey. Um, like the vultures, um, even um, some of the hyenas now come for it. But they eat to their satisfaction before they leave the prey. So now, this blessing is calling Judah a young lion that has eaten to his satisfaction. Mm. Not just eating, but eating to his satisfaction. And on that ground, he stood up. So, this is the blessing of parental provision and satisfaction. That's what this blessing is about. This blessing is the blessing of what? Parental provision and what? Satisfaction. We're going to be looking at it in two lights. We're going to be looking at it first for parental provision and then we'll look later on into satisfaction. Amen to Jesus. Now, um, it's a very important blessing because 
You see, um, parents are providers. The Bible is speaking, he said, a man that cannot provide for his family is worse than an infidel. Paul was speaking in that light. Parents are providers. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So, I did, it was not just provision because the young, he specifically talked about a young lion here. He talked about a cub mm-hmm. here. Why did, was the Bible specific about the cub? To make us understand that this is a lion that is dependent mm-hmm. on parents for provision. Mm-hmm. A cub cannot hunt to get meat. The parents have to hunt to get it. Now, so what does this imply? This blessing impri- implies dependence. Mm. It was a blessing of dependence. And we need to understand something that this actually is a blessing that every one of us in Christ has. Mm. It's a blessing of dependence. Trusting the Lord with all that I have, and he not on our own understanding, with all that ways acknowledging, mm. and he shall what? Direct that path. That is, a, that is a scripture of dependence. Trust in the Lord. God does not just want us to have the benefit of that. Mm. God wants us to trust him wholeheartedly. Yeah. Wholeheartedly. Utmost dependence on him. Absolute dependence on him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So this blessing was a typological blessing of what the New Testament is meant to be. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a blessing on Judah, a blessing on priests. And remember, even Judah, this blessing was actually on Christ Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus said something. He said, without my father, I can do nothing. Mm. So whatever my father tells me to do, that will I do. Mm. And then he said, my meat is to do the will of my father. So that means if my meat is to do my father, it's my father that provides his will for me to eat. Mm. Without my father providing his will for me to eat, I have no meat to eat. Mm. So the father, Jesus, was absolutely dependent on the father. It was a blessing of provision, but this provision comes with an understanding of absolute dependence. The Bible speaking says the early hours of the morning, Jesus would go and pray and seek the Lord and talk to the father. Why? Because he needed to depend on the father for the day's work. Now, this is beyond just giving God the benefit of doubt. This is beyond just faith for collecting from God. This is faith that totally throws you on God. That totally releases yourself to God that makes you absolutely dependent on God now someone say is that blind faith faith in God is God's faith at work in us and if God's faith at work in us cannot make us trust God in totality then that faith is not God's faith it says in all thy ways acknowledge me and it shall direct thy path it says many of the plans they have answered for the counsel of the Lord stand sure. God wants us to have plans God wants us to think but we should also know that it is counsel that we stand yes I'm not against thinking. See, we have thought too, and we are still thinking. Mm. I'm not against brainstorming. I'm not against planning. But if this far I have come, mm. I have planned more than I was thinking to someone that's like, do you think you have done what I have done? Do you think you have done what I have done? Do you think you have prayed the way I have prayed? Do you think you have fasted the way I have fasted? Do you think you have obeyed God the way I have obeyed God? Or do you think that the devil that is against you? It's a level of immaturity to think that you know it better than somebody, that's why you are succeeding better. Yeah. When we are working with God, we come to a point of absolute trust where we think but we allow Him to think through. Yes. At the end of the day, it is His thought that we stand. Mm. It is His counsel that we stand. We brainstorm, but we allow Him what? Implement. It is His counsel that we stand. That point is the point of absolute dependence on God. When we get to that point, we can understand this blessing of parental provision. Mm. Absolute dependence of God is one of the, for the physical man and the mental, the five senses, is the most difficult phase of working with God. The most difficult, I, 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 for, for the, in, the past, in the past one week, mm. one statement has been revolving around me. And that statement is, don't give up. I, I, I look here, don't give even when I was coming back at night that day, when I when I alighted, I just saw it so I said, Why is this thing revolving everywhere around me? I remember the last time when this thing was revolving was when um that's you know uh, this people's month has started that time. When the thing was just revolving everywhere around me. And I'm like, God, giving up is not my nature. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not my nature. I don't give up. But sometimes when God just reiterate some things again it's because he's trying to make you know that you are getting closer to breaking an ice and i just have to keep you intact i remember when the lord told me leave your father's house and bless you i remember when i saw it in scriptures when i went to the office that is what everybody was saying i was the thing was just i'll go to church everywhere i was surrounded it was just that word i was there i said this one god you won't run me man i have to obey you and know what you have to do 
So, in as much as we know how to plan, we know how to st strategize, oh, we know how to cross our teeth and dot our eyes, but we must, above all, know how to absolutely trust God. Absolutely trust God. When I think of what I'm going to say, that one that came, that I, the, I saw it was like, ah, no, I said no, I didn't want it. This one, I don't cross the dot, cross the, cross the dot, and I'm seeing this one. I'm seeing a libel court. Yes, it, it, uh, Job says, you deliver us from six trouble in seven. Not in general. I said, but you deliver me from that one. Uh -uh. I was so sure that one I shouldn't go. This one, I saw the levels of assurance we walked with, and Lord, but by the end of the day, you begin to understand there is something God is up to. Yeah. All he says is, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Yeah. Trust me. Parental provision must be received by the children on the grounds of trust. <laughs> children cannot walk out to get the food. It's what their parents provide for them. Oh. They, they get. And God wants us to get to that point where we know that whatever God, whatever He provides for us is what is important and is good for us. Trust me. Trust me. That's what God just wants from us. Trust me. Trust me. Even when you don't understand the whole journey, trust me. You see, one of the things you learn to do as you go on with your work with God is for you to enjoy His provisions. Is where you don't understand trust. Remember years ago, years ago, I wrote it and I posted it on Facebook. Sheep don't know the destination. They only obey the shepherd. They only trust the shepherd. They don't know where the shepherd is taking anybody, they just simply trust the shepherd. And somebody, was my primary school classmate, we were chatting there and he was trying to like, he, he, he wrote something then it was kind of running an online kind of fellowship or something like that. And when, when, when he saw that statement, he replied, words of experience from a man who has experienced things in ministry. <laughs> that was what he replied. Yeah. And this was, think back, maybe um, 10 years ago. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And somebody could relate with what I was saying. Parental provision is received on the grounds of trust. Many of us want God to provide, but we don't want to trust Him to provide. We want God to provide, but we want Him to provide the way we want Him to provide. Mm. We want God to provide, but we want to dictate the provision. Mm. Now, these are the challenges we have with what? Parental provision. These are the challenges we have with God provision. Remember, we were when we want to go buy um, clothes items. Sometimes, this one, I don't like it. But my parents will convince me. Now that isn't what they are going to buy from me. Why? Because they are the ones actually what? Spending. Providing. They are the ones spending the money. I'm not the ones spending the money. So I have to take what they provide. I can still remember, this is dead back about 20 years ago. I can still remember a shoe that was bought for me. I did not like that shoe. The picture is still in my mind today. But my mother convinced me that that's the shoe I have to take. I don't have to take the shoe. Why? Because that was what they could afford to get. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is what we need to understand about parental provision and God's, God's parental provision for us. And some of the time, for every parent, yes, you may not like it, but you know what? At the end of that day, that shoe lasted more. Because then, when we used to look at clothes and shoes, we look for fancy. Mm -hmm. But our parents look for durability. Yes. We knew fancy, they knew durability. That time they, they buy the shirt, it is longer than your hand, you fold it. But it is a quality one. They buy the trouser, it is longer than your, your leg. You hem it. It's a quality one. They buy the shoe, it is bigger than your leg. You put paper inside and wear it till your leg grows. Because they are your parents, they, they know how the leg is growing fast. And if they buy the shoe exactly the size, in a few days, in a few weeks, they will have to buy a new one. So they buy something that is quality, but what? Bigger than you. So that you can wear, grow into the quality over time. And we wanted fancy, we didn't want quality. We, we wanted fitted, we didn't want something we can grow into. But they knew what was best for us. Yeah. When we became adults and we knew that we're not growing taller again, we started buying 
quality, we started buying fitted. We started buying our exact size because we are not growing taller. The only thing is that we may grow bigger, fatter a bit too. And when we grow fatter, we can know how to work out to get back to shape if we have to maintain the same clothing. Yeah. But while we are still under their cover, they have to buy what we can grow into. Mm. And we need to understand something. At the end of this, some of us, we wore those clothes and those clothes lasted us. The major importance then to them was we were, our nakedness was covered. Mm. And as we work with God, we need to understand what is priority, priority to God per time. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. At a stage of life, some of us think that it is the fancy things that is priority to God. Mm. But that is not what is priority to God. What is priority to God at that point in time is our needs. My God shall supply all your needs mm. according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And God's priority per time is providing our needs, meeting our needs. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. There is a point we get to where God now begins to provide luxuries for us. Yes, it happens. The Bible says, um, 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 delight I serve in the Lord and with direct your But the word delight there means it means to be malleable and flexible in the hand of the Lord. And you get what I'm saying? The Hebrew yes. word there. Another word that explains delight also is the word um, 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 luxury and superficiality. Are you get what I'm saying? Yes. That means God takes us to a point where He begins to give us even the things in code that we think we don't need. Are you get what I'm saying? Mm. But we get to that level when we begin to experience that. Only when we have been able to know by his leading what we need because we have been able to adjust to his need, his provisions per time. So if we are not able to adjust his provisions per time, we discover that he will not take us to a point where he will even begin to provide things that in quote we don't need. Mm -hmm. A man of God once, they told him to buy a house for him. This was a particular country where, in this particular mission street, where the, the, the ministry came out for seven years, they were toiling and toiling and toiling and nothing was working. Nothing was working. They changed location, yet it wasn't working. And after then, you know, they had to live as instructed by the Lord. Now, years down the road, their, the bra their branches are proliferated everywhere. Mm -hmm. And at the point in time, they told him they wanted to buy a house for him in one of the choice places in the capital city here. And he asked them, What do I need it for? Now, but there was a time if they bless him with that blessing, hey, it should have been very important. In fact, that blessing would have been a proof of God with him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm. But why will God take you to a point where at the end of the day, those things are not important to you mm. again? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So God, his parenti parental provision begins with basics. And as it begins with basics, it now metamorphoses into what? Even luxuries. Mm. And when I mean luxuries, I mean that you will not use your money to buy it. People will be the ones what? Buying the things and giving to you. They'll be the ones just giving, and you will dash out, they will bring in. You will dash out, they will bring in. You will dash out, they will bring in. One of God said, one day somebody bought him a shoe, what? How many million naira? And he said, he was, ah, he was crying, he was shouting, he was, I said, ah, ah, why didn't you give me the money? He said, ah. He said, but no, but he said, no. He was thinking of how many ministry work that money will do. You see, at that point, there was a time wherein that shoe would have been a proof of God with him. Mm. That kind of shoe. But now, if I haven't seen shirt and trailer to wear, let me be flying and be doing God's work. This is the provision of God. It comes in this light to train us, to develop us. Mm. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. And the purpose of this is for us to build trust in the Lord. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Now, so this blessing, the bless this is the blessing, this is a blessing of provision because the young lion cannot provide for itself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm. It actually depends on his parents to provide. Inability of the parents to provide for the well is what makes the young lion lack. Psalm 54 verse 10, 34 verse 10 says, The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Praise God forevermore. So, where the young lion begin to lack, it is because what? The parents cannot do what? Cannot provide. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. And um, what do they call? What do they? What um, the blessing here specifically states that Judah, Judah, will eat to satisfaction. Mm. That means he'll be well provided for. Mm. He'll be well provided for. Now, but we've learned something that for you to for Judah to have to enjoy this provision, he has to absolutely trust his parents. 
The young lion has to trust his parents for provision, for him to enjoy provision. And you see, trust, trust, trust is one of the things that God builds as we walk with him. I'm talking from experience. Sometimes when you go through some kind of things, you wonder why you have to go through them. Well, you see, all these things are all the trust journey. They are the trust journey. Yeah. They are the journey of trust. Not in men, but in God. Yeah. When um, Jehovah said, God told you one, said, can you use one eye to look up and another one to look down at the same time? He said, no. And God told him, when you are looking up to men, stop claiming that you are looking up to me. Mm. We don't understand these kind of statements because we have not been through the journey of trust. When I tell people that, God brings help at time for me when it is needed. They don't understand. When I tell people that, I don't store numbers because I will need the number later. Mm. Are you getting what I'm saying? They don't understand. Mm. It is because of this understanding over the time that we can say these kind of things. Trust is our journey that God takes us in. So we can be what? Pops in his hand. Mm. For us to enjoy satisfaction, we must learn to trust him. And the proof of trusting God is that we will keep praising, even when the things are not sweet. Mm. Even when they are not making sense, we we'll just keep praising Him. We we'll keep praising Him. Praising to praise and understanding it gradually is becoming more clear to me. At least with my experiences in life, it is becoming more clear to me. We have prayed some prayers. At the end of the day, when you finish praying, God will still do it in His own time. That was the have made up in between His time. So if you receive it in His own time, why don't I invest more of my time into thanking him? Are you get what I'm saying? Yes. Than what? Petitioning him for long hours. Mm-hmm. Because he's going to do it in his own way, in his own time. So, I should rather invest my time into thanking him, for he will do it in his own way, in his own time. And end of the world he's working at, I will see it. So let me thank him because at, when he does it, I will see what he's working out. And it will all be for my good. Mm. Than petitioning him and trying to, to, with my small mind, my small brain, trying to rationalize his operation. Mm. Those who trust God understand this principle. Yeah. Do you understand this principle? I'm not saying it's easy, it's not easy. I get what I'm saying. Yes. It's not easy, but they understand this principle. Now, so. It is the responsibility of parents to provide in every way for their children. This is why it is normal for orphans to suffer lack in every way because they do not have parents. Remain connected. Teaching continues shortly. Beloved, we will like to introduce to you one of our latest book releases. Titled, The Money in You. Authored by Chimdi Ohahuna, there is nothing created by God that can be searched by man. Even the brain of a man cannot be explored. It is called the greatest machine in the world, the biggest, largest filing cabinet. The brain of man is bigger than all the bites there are in this life. Thus, even the exploration of the brain on its own has no limit and it has no end. This is also the reason why as individuals we cannot search ourselves in totality. Sometimes, it is pressures and tough situations that reveal some of our hidden potentials, stretch ability, capabilities, and strengths. Furthermore, God never created anything to be explored because he created from an eternity point of view. Even time was created from eternity, so time cannot be explored. Being unsearchable is a part of the creativity of God imputed into Adam, the creation in the image and likeness of God. Hence, if you are not searching, you are not attaining. The inability to search God out is his spice in creation which he got from himself knowing that his holiness is unsearchable. This book is the beginning of something new that will lead you to manifest the unsearchable riches in Christ. This book will also lead you to a place of rest and put money, good things, riches, abundance, wealth, possessions, and valuable bestowment in your hands. We believe strongly that, this book will bring you to the realization of the unsearchable wealth of Christ, put in you at new birth, for use in this life and life eternal. The Bible reveals that money can go very quickly. It can seem to grow wings and fly away like a big bird. There is a difference between, I have money, and, there is money in me. 
When you have money you can lose money but, when there is money and you can never lose money. One of the disadvantages or problems of having money is that it comes today and it can go tomorrow. Through the study of this book series, we believe strongly that you will receive great life that will usher you to a realm in money that you have never imagined you could manifest. Money in you is more than producing and storing up currencies. Get a copy of this book series today not for yourself alone but also for your family and friends. Order a copy today via Amazon. Welcome back. Who made provision for, their, for them? Are we together? Yes. Because if parents don't make provision, then lack and want becomes a want. Situation on ground. Orphans suffer lack, except they get into an orphanage. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Or they get, they get adopted by somebody. If they don't do that, if that does not happen, then they begin to suffer lack. And when children are even exposed to start struggling at an early age, it gives them a very, 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 very unfair view of life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. By right, the purpose of parents is to be able to make provision for children so that they grow at their stage, they grow at their levels, they enjoy the faces of life. You know, um, looking at um, some uh, people who I, I was watching, I was watching a particular um, um, actress, and she she was from a from a young age at early. Um, not even she's not a teenager, early adolescence. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She started, she started developing. She developed so fast, and she had de um, developed um, um, face shape and everything. So, and she was beautiful. So, because of that, she was exposed into the movie industry very early, and people started coming after her as though she was. An adult, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it messed up her mind so much. She was even exposed into erotic scenes. You get it? Mm -hmm. At an early age. It messed up her mind so badly. She was making her father was now merchandising her. Merchandising her seriously. Making her act movies because she was making the money for them. So it got to a point where she had to take a stand. And say no, I can't continue this. I'm losing it. Another one was a young guy too, a popular actor. He started acting from a very early age, very early age. So his family were actually he was their gold mine. They were merchandising. His parents were merchandising him. So he got to a point. He said he lost his life. The only person who actually um, understood him was his, his sister, and then his sister later died. So he just lost his life. So what did he do? He had to sue his father to court. He sued his father and took damages from his father. Because the father was one collecting the money. The father was, the money, was his manager, I can imagine that. Mm. And collected damages from his father and then left the house. That kind of thing, it always makes them messed up. Their mind is always messed up. They lose their life. What about another one who was a musician too? From the age of five, he was exposed into the, the stage. And it was said that his father would make him rehearse crazy. They would go to studio, they would rehearse crazy. And then also make him go to school after rehearsal. So he's going from school to studio. School. He never he lost his childhood. He never had a child. So he lived his life miserable. miserable. When parents don't provide, they make children lose their childhood. Aside the lack of are you getting what I'm saying? Of maybe basic necessity. Mm -hmm. They make the children lose their childhood. And when a child loses his childhood, he begins to look for that child later on in life. Mm -hmm. Because stages in life cannot be jumped. Mm -hmm. That person that you at, at 40, they now stand his baby. Mm -hmm. At 35, they stand his baby. Because they are looking for their childhood they lost. So parenting, the purpose of parenting is to make a child holistic, provide for a child holistically, spiritually, psychologically. Physically and otherwise, emotionally, so that the child does not lack anything. If there's one area where the child is lacking, what some, some of the people who, some of the ladies, or the, uh, some of the, uh, I, 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 I read the story of a particular boy who was became a gay simply because his father was just a crazy guy. He would be the mother, 
He will beat them, he will get drunk, he will beat the mother, beat them, beat, and, and just the man, the father was just crazy. He was just crazy. And he lost his childhood. And so he kept on looking for a father figure. Until one day, in a drinking spot, a, a, a man took him and sat him on his lap. So for the first time, he felt the fatherhood's touch. And as the guy sat him on his lap, the guy started manipulating around his body. And that was how he got into that mess. That was what brought him into the mess. Why? Because of lack of parental or provision. So, we're talking about orphans here. We're not talking about orphans only in the sense of no food to eat, no clothes to wear, no school to go to. We're talking about all round provision. Mm. And you get what I'm saying? Yes. And so, this blessing of provision given by Jacob to Judah was that which made him never lack. It's a blessing that prevents lack in every application. Mm. I know what? God doesn't want us to lack in any way. Are you yes. getting what I'm saying? Mm. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want one. Even though his biological parents were absent, because when Jacob gave, after he gave this blessing, what happened? Jacob packed himself and what? And died. Are you getting me? Yes. Oh, before you know, um, he actually showed them where he buried Leah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm. So, parents were not available. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But it was a blessing to never lack provision, even in the absence of parents. Now, we know that as we grow, we may not need parental provision in terms of finances and even emotionally as we grow. You get what I'm saying? Mm. But, you see, there's a, there's a provision that parents still provide for their children, even when the children are mm. adults. Is a provision of prayers. When prayers are still praying for their children, they are covering them in a way that the children themselves cannot cover themselves. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. And so when 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 Jacob was blessing Judah, he was telling him every kind of provision that parents provide, mm. you will not lack it. Mm. You will not lack it. Mm. You'll be well provided for. Mm. You won't lack any kind of provision that parents provide. Mm. Spiritual, psychological, all around, you won't lack it. You know, when I call my, my my parents and they tell me we are praying for you, I know how I feel. When I call our in, my in-laws and they, my parents and they tell us we are praying for you, I know how I feel. I know I know the feeling I have. I know I've been praying on my own, but I know that if my parents are doing their putting their own, it's a cover over me. And we don't I, I try to look for mentors. To really submit to. But no one wants to accept. I you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I'm left to fight my battles alone. But when my parents tell me they are praying for me, I know it just gives me a sense of encouragement that I'm not alone. You know what I'm saying? Yes. In this. Then, what of the blessing of you will never lack parental provision? Mm. Even though I, your father, I am living, your mother has left. I'm giving you something that would live as a cover, a provision to you, even in my absence. Mm. Jacob was doing something that was symbolic and typological of what Jesus did. Mm. I am living, but I am giving you my, my provision that will last for you, even when I live physically. Yes. Rightly stated, this blessing made God the parent of Judah, because only God is the father of the family. Yes. So what, what this blessing did for Judah was that it made God his father. Mm. He made God his parent. Psalm 68 verse 5 says, The father of the fatherless and the judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God is the father of the fatherless. So what Jacob did for Judah was to make God his what? His father. I, your biological father, I'm leaving you, but what am I doing? I'm giving you to God as a child. Mm. I'm dedicating you to God as a child. Now, God will be your father. Mm. God will be your mother. Mm. God will provide for you in my absence. There is no bigger blessing than this. Without God for parents giving their children things, but we, 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 we appreciate it the most when parents give their children God. Mm. Yes, sir. 
So when my parents tell me, we are praying for you, when they tell me morning and evening and pray, you see, I was talking to somebody, I said, come. I know that I pray, I thank God for the prayers that God has, that, that, that I pray. But I say, you see, you think you can stop me when my parents are on their knees praying for me? I you get what I'm saying? You think you can stop? You see, you, see, you can't. If, you know, because these people, are, when I talk to my mom, my mom will say, I have dashed you to God. In other words, now, God is now your parent. Yeah. You see, when she tells me that, I didn't used to understand, but now I understand it in a light. God is not your father. I have been, I, I've seen them last, um, 2017. I saw them last, 2017, two weeks. Prior to them, 2014 was the last time I saw them. So in the space of in the space of uh, 2014 to 2023, I have not seen my parents. I haven't seen them physically. 2023, yes, because two weeks. Let's remove two weeks out of 2023. Already four weeks, um, four weeks into 2023. So, 2023, since 2020, 2023, two weeks. That means I've barely not seen them for like um, seven years. And in that kind of situation, who will be my parent? So when she will say, "I dash you to God," me, I understand it this light. That now you have made God my parent. Mm. Because how else can I state this? We have made God my parents. And you see, this was the blessing that Judah, that J Jacob gave to Judah. Mm. I have made God your, your parents. Mm. I, have, I have made you a, a, a child of God. Mm. So every provision that I can I would have made that I cannot make. God, who can provide more than you with it? Jesus told them, He said, How many of you let me find, how many of you father that your son asks you for a fish and give him a snake? Mm -hmm. Or will he ask you for a bread and give him a stone? He said, If you wicked earthly fathers can do such good to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give you everything you ask for? Mm -hmm. Now he called them wicked earthly fathers. That means no matter how good an earthly father is, he's still at the best a wicked earthly father. Yeah. Because the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. Now they could do that kind of good for their children. What about our Heavenly Father? Mm. So when Jacob was giving this blessing, he was, he, was, he, was, he was giving Judah to God as the child of God. You see, the same way Anna gave, she said, I, let, I will let it to God. The same way she gave Samuel to God. That was what Jacob did to Judah on his deathbed. Mm. I have not given you. Why is it only Judah that he chose to give to God like that? I have not only given, I have not successfully given you to God. You have not become God's responsibility. Mm. <laughs> ah, so in view of this, Jesus said to his disciples, I will not leave you comfortless. That means the word comfortless means of is the Greek word for phanos, mm. which means orphans. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. Mm. So what Jesus did here. Was what Jacob did to Judah. Yes. What Jesus did to his disciples was what Jacob did to what Judah. He gave them the blessing of provision. Mm. That's like look at John chapter fourteen verse eighteen says, "I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you." He said, "I will come to you." You know what I'm saying? Yes. I will come to you. Now Jesus gave his gave his disciples, and by extension, all who will be his disciples, this blessing of Judah, mm. the same blessing that Jacob gave to Judah. Jacob said, I'm going. I give you the blessing of parental provision. Mm. That means it is now God that will provide for you. I will not leave you as a orphan, Judah. They were, he was leaving how many sons? 12 sons plus grandchildren. Because uh, Ephraim and Manasseh were his grandchildren. And instead of blessing Joseph, he actually blessed Ephraim and Manasseh. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Now, so he was leaving, he was leaving 12 sons. There's no tribe of Joseph. Joseph's two sons were the ones who took tribe. I get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He was living as it were, twelve sons, but out of the twelve, he picked only one to give him the blessing of parental provision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> only that one. We have understood that this blessing was not just for Judah as it were; it was for the ultimate Judah, which is the person of Christ Jesus. I get what I'm saying. Yes. And this understanding that that blessing of Jacob was given to Jesus was the same basis on which Jesus gave the blessing to the disciples. Mm. He said, I will not leave you as what? Orphanos. Are we getting what I'm saying? Yes. I will not leave you comfortless. I 
And this blessing of fatherhood or parental provision that Jesus gave to his disciples is not just meat. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not just food. This blessing is actually the person of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Who God the Father gave to all who believe in and confess Jesus. And why did why did it, the Father give to all of us who confess and believe in Jesus? Because Jesus requested for it. Yeah. The same way Jacob, by blessing Judah, he requested for God to be his Judah's father. That same way Jesus, by blessing the disciples, he requested for the Father to give the Holy Spirit. John 14, verse 16 to 17 says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because he seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but he know him, for he dwelleth within you, and shall be in you. So the blessing of provision was what Jacob did for Judah, parental provision. And Jesus did the same thing for us. Amen. Jacob gave Judah to God as his child for the God to provide for Judah. And Jesus, who is the one who came to that prophecy, and the prophecy sized him, like we said, the prophecy was an assigned prophecy. It took 1,600 years for these prophecies to manifest. Mm. 1,600 years after, before Jesus came and entered the prophecy and it was his size. It was an oversized prophecy for Judah. Jesus, who knew what Jacob did, understood the way things are done. And so Jacob prophesied in accordance with the Father's will for me to enter into this prophecy. Mm. Me, as I'm going, I will do what Jacob also did. Mm. I will still give you the blessing of God. Parental provision. Mm. And this blessing of parental provision is not just in things, it is in the person of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So Yahweh is our Heavenly Father who knows all we need and He has provided all we need for us in the person of the Holy Spirit. Who Jesus requested Him to give to His disciples. Mm. We see that in John 14, verse 16 to 17. Matthew 6, verse 33 says, For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that he hath need of all these God knows what I need, sir. God knows. You see, I may not understand a lot. These years, I may not understand a lot. But God knows what I need. And you see, he knows what I need. And he has provided it in the person of the Holy Spirit. You know one truth? Once you have the Holy Spirit, you have all the provisions yes. made available by the yes. Father to you. Yes, yes, yes. So once you have the Holy Spirit, you cannot lack. Amen. You cannot lack. Once you have the Holy Spirit, you cannot lack. You cannot lack. You cannot lack. You can't lack. You can't lack. Je- uh, Jesus said, the psalmist David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Once you have the Holy Spirit, you cannot lack. It's not possible to lack. Why? Because that's the provision of the Father for us. The provision for us not to lack is the Holy Spirit. This is why Jesus called him the Comforter in John 14, verse 16 or 17. Why? Because he prevents us from being comfortless. He prevents us from being orphanos. He prevents us from being what? Orphans. That's how we have the Holy Spirit. So what does praise do for us? Praise makes us conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit, who is all of God's provision to prevent lack for us His children. Why do we praise God? We praise God so we remain conscious of the Holy Spirit. With the consciousness of the Holy Spirit, we know we cannot lack. No, 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 we cannot lack. You see, we will only lack when we lack the Holy Spirit. So long as we don't lack the Holy Spirit, we cannot lack. The Bible said the young lion was do lack, but they that see that, that, that follow the Lord shall not what? Shall not lack any good thing. They shall not what? Lack any good thing. They shall not lack anything. It says the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Mm. They shall not want any good thing. We have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Our job is to keep praising the Lord. Why? Because as we keep praising Him, we shall not want any good thing. Not just anything, but any 
good thing. So what does that mean? Basic necessities we have. And not only will he provide basic necessities for us, when it comes to the time of us having luxuries, he will provide luxuries. Amen. There is a level for luxuries. He will provide luxuries. Necessity will be provided. Luxury will be provided. We shall not want any good thing. Praise keeps us conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit in us, who is our provider to ensure we do not want any good thing. Let's lift up our voice and praise the Lord. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number 033-154-551-2013. Swift code M B G H G H A C to give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. You can send to account number 033-254-551-2017. To give in Naira, you can send to EcoBank Nigeria. Account number. 5541020592 Also for further enquiries you can call us on plus +2335459471320 OR send us an email via chimdiohahuna ministry at gmail.com Today remain ever blessed Now is your moment of salvation if you are yet to make the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and personal Savior. We request that you say this prayer along with many others now. Say this words, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, I repent of my sins, and ask that you forgive my sins. I believe that you shed your blood on the cross, died for my sins, and rose again in the third day. Today, I invite you into my life today. Wash me by your blood, make me your own until eternity be my Lord and personal Savior, thank you Lord Jesus, in Jesus' precious name. Thanks for listening to this teaching. We believe you were blessed listening to this prophetic and life-changing teaching episode. We would like to receive your praise report of your encounter with the Lord, through the ministry of Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. To send in your praise report or make a request, kindly send us an email via ministry at gmail.com. If you need more information about the ministry and would like to give a love offering today, you can visit our website via www.chimdiohahunaministry.org. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord.